Oh, morning, little hound. What would we like for breakfast? I don't know. Surprise me. Um... Shut <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I meant I want to try a new breakfast sensation. OK, um, well, there's high fibre bum flakes. I think that shock has had the same effect on me as several bowls of bran fibre. Mm. Um, well, what about these? They're called coconut crunches. They're new... Run away! They'll get you! The coconuts will beat you up! Yeah! Well, I wasn't expecting that. Little Howard? <laughs> Little Howard? Are they gone? Are what gone? The deadly man eating coconuts. What, those? Ah, run, you fool! They'll cream you, they'll ice you, they'll put a bounty on your head, they'll back you into a corner, they'll desiccate you! Enough with the coconut puns. Little Howard, I'm sure there's loads more dangerous foods in the world than coconuts. Little, little Howard? What is the most dangerous food in the world? How about a knuckle sandwich? Thousands of coconuts are waking up in prison today after being arrested for murder. A small cartoon boy is helping police with their inquiries. I love monkeys, I love monkeys. All those happy little, chirpy little monkeys with their tails and their bananas. I think that if we all were monkeys, we'd have happier manadas. Monkeys, lots of monkeys. Boy, you know that next to monkeys I adore. If my love said that she did not love those monkeys, I wouldn't love her anymore. Thank you very much. In certain parts of the world, they actually eat monkey brains. <laughs> Don't worry, boys. There wouldn't be enough between you lot to cover one nacho. <laughs> I found my watch. <laughs> Little Howard, why do you want to know what the most dangerous food in the world is? Because you just said there are more dangerous foods in the world than coconuts, and I don't believe you. <sighs> why are you scared of coconuts? It's a well-known scientific fact that coconuts kill more people every year than sharks do. Where did you hear that from? I heard it from a very reliable source. Boy said down the swings. And where had he heard it from? He'd heard it from another boy by some different swings. Or was it the same swings? Anyway, he'd heard it from a girl in a Wendy house and she'd heard it from her mum who'd heard it from her hairdresser, so it must be true. Even if it is true, there's no reason to be scared of coconut cereal. Anything that's hard on the shark should not be allowed to sneak into people's houses in cereal boxes. Right, I've had enough of this. Mother! Hello, boys! Don't ask what she's doing, it never makes any sense. What are you doing? Baking! Barking more like, don't ask her what she's baking. What are you baking? I don't know. Ask the oven. OK. No! How can I help? I want to know what the most dangerous food in the world is. For some reason he thinks it's coconuts. Oh, you should be scared of coconuts, little Howard. Thank you. You should be scared of potatoes. Exactly, you should be scared. What? And tapioca. Both of which could be deadly poisonous. That's not true. Tis, tis, tis. Wild potatoes in particular and ordinary potatoes that have gone green contain a toxin that can cause cramps, diarrhoea and even worse. It is entirely removed when you cook it, but it is there. Well, then, th there's nothing to be scared of. And, and I'm sure people only think tapioca's poisonous. What? Lovely tapioca? Mm. The tapioca you buy from shops mm. is perfectly safe. But it's made from cassava root, which, before it's processed, contains the poison cyanide. Lucky it tastes like warmed up sick or someone might eat it. Oh, yes, and there's also chocolate. Oh, please don't tell me chocolate's poisonous. You'll tell me TV's bad for my eyes next. In sensible amounts, chocolate benefits the circulation and can release the feel-good chemical serotonin into the body. It does, however, contain a very small amount of a poison called theobromine, which in large amounts can make you very ill, and even in small amounts can be fatal to dogs and birds. But none of those foods are as scary as coconuts. Right, 
I'm going to cure you of this ridiculous phobia of coconuts. How? You're not going to surround me with coconuts and force me to make friends with them, are you? What, like aversion therapy? No. I remember when you tried to cure a mother of her fear of water by throwing her in the sea. Yeah, who'd have thought a computer could swim, hey? No, there's someone I want you to meet. They, they should be around here somewhere. Oh. Hello. <laughs> ah, get them Ooh. away from me! Ah! You all right, little Howard? Oh, sorry, I thought you were a gang of marauding coconuts trying to jump us. No, this is Kevin Palmer. He's an expert in bushcraft. Thanks for agreeing to help us, Kevin. Now, as an expert in survival, could you please tell little Howard that coconuts are our friends? Yeah, they are our friends, like anything else out here. There's friends and there's enemies, and we need to know the difference. If you follow me, I'll show you how. So, little Howard, I don't know why you're so scared of coconuts. Coconuts are so useful. You can use them for water, food, fire, shelter, all the four principles of bushcraft. If you've got those four, you're going to survive. Oh, these are pretty. What are they called? You could find little Howard. Those ones are sulphur tufts, but I wouldn't touch them. They are poisonous and they'll make you quite sick, so yeah. I'd leave them well alone. They're called sulphur tufts because you can see they've got those bright yellow stems on them, which is the same colour as the compound sulphur. They've also got quite a nasty smell as well, and sulphur can be a bit smelly at times, so that's where they get their name. What's this, Kevin? Uh, that'll be a tree. Oh, a tree. Yeah. If I ate that whole tree, Kevin, mm. would I die? Yeah. He's very good, isn't he, the coward? Right, this one here, this is the classic toadstool that everyone, you know, what everyone imagines the toadstools to look like, bright red with white spots on. This is a type of fungus called fly garrick, and it is one of our poisonous <clears> ones. <throat> it's not the most poisonous, but it certainly wouldn't do you much good if you eat it. Um, you'll be very, very sick, and then you'll start suffering from dreadful hallucinations. But that one looks like it's been eaten already by something. Yeah, so, uh, some animals, like rabbits and slugs and even deer and things, uh, for some reason the, t the poisons don't affect them. Um, and so you have to be careful. Slugs, for instance, if you eat slugs, they could have been feeding on these mushrooms and they can actually concentrate some of the poisons inside them. Lil Hal, what have I told you about eating slugs? You said not even the French do that. Some of the old shaman and witch doctors in some tribes have used this to actually to induce these dreams and these hallucinations to predict the future. But they wouldn't eat the mushroom as it is. What they would do is they'd get a reindeer to eat it and then they'd drink the reindeer's wee. What, Rudolph Weddle? Awful, isn't it? What that does is it gets rid of the stuff that makes you sick but still leaves the chemical in there that gives the hallucinations. And so they would take this and they'd have these dreams and predict the future. But I wouldn't recommend it. It is a nasty one and if you eat too much it could potentially kill you and it'll certainly make you very ill. And there's a very closely related one, which is called the death cap, and just one cap of that, it would just that would be enough to kill you outright. And it's a very slow, painful death. It's not good. So this group of mushrooms is one to be avoided at all costs. So you see, little Howard, there are a lot more dangerous and scary things out there than coconuts. In fact, I know where you can get hold of the hottest chili in the world. Did you find it deep in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, surrounded by savage coconuts? No, it's at Sea Spring Farm, deep in the darkest Dorset. Wow. Anyway, if you need me, just give me a call. What? Do a bird call or shout like Tarzan or something? No, just ring on the mobile, that's much easier. See ya. Thanks very much, Kevin. Kevin? He's gone. Where's Dorset, Big Howard? I don't know. Oh, for goodness what? sake, there's a map. Wow! He was like a ginger, wasn't he, Big Howard? A ninja. A ginger ninja. No, just a ninja. A just a ginger ninja. Get in the car. Come on. Are we nearly there yet? We're slightly closer than the last time you asked, half a minute ago. I wish I'd had breakfast. I'm starving. Well, there, there might be something to eat if you look in the glove compartment. Ah! Stop the car!
You did that on purpose, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hello. This is Joy and Michael. They run Seaspring Farm. Hello, Joy. Hello, Michael. Hello, little Howard. Why on earth are you dressed as an Eskimo? Because I'm at a chili farm. Well, somebody gave you the wrong idea, Howard. We're going to go into some polytunnels and it's going to be really hot in there, so you better lose that thing as soon as you can. Why don't we go up now before it gets too hot, shall we? Yeah, great. Come on. Okay, guys, here we are, the big enchilada. This is the Dorset Naga, which has uh, been selected from Bangladeshi Naga Moorish. And this is one of the hottest chilies in the world. All right, so how hot is this thing? I don't know. Well, it measures about a million Scoville heat units. Now, a Scoville heat unit is, is, is a unit that we use to measure pungency in chilies. Okay, if that's a million. No. Then if we go to a supermarket, and sometimes you find these jalapenos, this measures about 8,000 Scoville heat units. I use those in curries and those are quite hot. Exactly, so that means that if I took a powder of that and some powder of this and I measured the heat in both of them, this one is going to be 125 times hotter than this one is. How hot is that? This is the 125 jalapenos and that gives you an idea of just how much hotter it is than this. 125 times! Right, okay, so does anybody want to have a go? Well, as a responsible adult, I think that little Howard should go first. Hooray! Little Howard, are you sure? We normally don't let kids eat this, but since you're a cartoon, I think we can do that. No, no, it's, it's okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'll make up your mind, you big gibber. Are you sure you're up for it? I think so. Right, well, have a go. Well, I don't think you have to quite hold it that way, but if you feel more comfortable doing it, go I'm ahead. Scared of it. Well, I wouldn't be. All right, you guys ready to go? I think Shall so. we have a go? Okay, look, now what? What? No, 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 no. That's not the way you test the chili. You break it in half first, all right? You do it like that, yeah? See? Now, when you break it open, make sure you don't touch your fingers because then that, the, the, those chemicals that cause the heat gets on your fingers, and then if you pick your nose or rub your eye or stick it in your mouth, you're going to get really hot all over again. So you break it open, yeah? Then you have a whiff, uh, just like a wine, and then you just gently, gently touch it to your tongue. All right, now listen, gently, right? Okay, you got that little Howard, make okay. sure he does it right. Go ahead, okay? Now have a go. Ooh, it smells quite nice. It's like, like orange aid sort of thing. Yeah, could yeah. be, yeah, okay. It does have a nice smell. And then, just, yeah. oh, this isn't gonna be bad at all, this will be fine. Are now. you gonna have a go? What effect will the mega hot chilies have on Big and Little Howard? Will either of them be able to speak for the next 15 minutes? Will I have to narrate the rest of the episode for them? Because I can! I don't have so much on this afternoon. Find out after these adverts. Do your school dinners look dangerous? Don't leave it to chance. Ring the Regal Association of Tasters. And we'll send round a personal food taster to try it for you. Just like kings and queens have. From rancid kippers to hot dogs laced with the toxic alkaloid of the Colombian golden poison frog. Whatever the dodgy nose bag, ring the RAT. Get straight through to us. Or it might go straight through you. Oh dear. Oh dear. Come on. That's it. That's quite fiery. That's, that's not mucking about that. Oh, that's quite hot. Yes. What, what's it feel like? It's like someone's put a, a hot coal on my yeah, tongue. Yeah. So it's not so much a taste as, as almost a physical feeling. It feels like someone's sticking hot needles through my tongue, is it? That's good. That's what we like to hear. Now it's getting peppery. Oh, yeah. I feel like <laughs> I can't close my lips because it feels like my, the air in my mouth will expand. Mm, yeah. That's, that's pretty peppery. That's quite hot. Ow. Oh, I've just swallowed now. 
Oh, swallowing is a bad idea, isn't it? That's not a good idea. Give us a go. I mean, how bad could it be? I wouldn't do that, Howard. Oh, don't, 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 don't. Seriously, don't. It is really quite... Oh, no. It, no, don't. See, nothing to it. He did it. Silly boy. Any more? <sighs> oh. Yeah! Oh, that's hot! Oh, Where, where's he going? I don't know. You are right. You need anything. I d um, what makes it stop? Uh, let's get some yogurt or some milk. That'll take care of it, OK? It's supposedly... See, there's these chemicals called capsaicinoids, and that's what's causing it. And if we take the milk or the yogurt, apparently it dissolves it down a bit. Come back for the yogurt! Fire, fire brigade! It, my tongue's kind of getting okay, quite... OK, I think the best thing to do is you just wait, and then it's going to go away. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for having us, Michael. That was uh, very informative. I, are you going to make it? I think I'll be okay if I yeah, eat a lot of yogurt. <laughs> Anything? How did you get over the chilies? It was lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next time I want that sensation, I'll definitely come back. Well, I'm afraid you're going to be thinking of us in another 12 hours, little Howard. Oh dear. I don't know what you mean. Well, it usually hurts as much coming out as it does going in. Oh, it. <laughs> Big Howard, what did Michael mean when he said it would be as hot on the way out as it was? Oh, oh. oh dear, Big Howard. Got the car. A fiery oh, bank. good idea. I think I might be about to have an action, Big Howard. Bound by wild desire, I fell into a ring of Ow. Oh, that stinks. I fell oh, into dear. The ring of fire. Big Howard, I'm starving. Are you going to eat that? Eat what? That. The steering wheel? Yeah, got any ketchup? Blimey, you are hungry, aren't you? Um Oh, I know, we'll stop here. All right, lads. Take a seat, mind the puddle. What can I get here? Firstly, do you have coconuts? No, 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 it's just the way I'm standing. Oh, coconuts? Oh, no, no. Most of the stuff I serve here is fried, you see. Well, that's not actually true. Quite a lot of it's deep fried. Yeah, but I bet you've got more dangerous food on your menu than coconuts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got wasps. You serve wasps? Well, no, no. I use the menu to swat the wasps, and then I can't be bothered scraping them off. I'll have 20 wasps, please. I'm starving. Well, if you're hungry and it's dangerous food you're after, I have got the most fattening burger in the world on my menu. Brilliant! Sounds a bit dangerous, Ill Howard. Double brilliant! Yeah, it's called the Quadruple Bypass Burger. I nicked the idea from a diner in Arizona in the USA called the Heart Attack Grill. Why is it called a quad bike biplate? A quadruple bypass. It refers to a heart operation. It's got 8,000 calories. It means it's very, very dangerous, little Howard. I'll have two. Oh, um, well, I've never actually made one before, you see. It was just a bit of a gimmick to get me in the papers. That's going to take ages, that, isn't it? Oh, look at the time. It's, uh, cook it yourself hour. What? Yeah, between the hours of four and whenever I close, I can't be bothered cooking. Most customers usually prefer it. <laughs> Give me the apron. Right, one quadruple bypass burger coming up. What do I do? Well, firstly, you've got to fry... um... everything. Bacon going on there. That's perfectly normal. Don't worry. Bert's cat's in the book of Britain's best eats, you know. It never is. He's in this one. 
he scribbled it in in crayon. There are 8,000 calories in this burger. That's three times more than the average man is supposed to have every day. Voila! The highest calorie beef burger in the world. Brilliant! Are you going to make yours now? Well, I've always been interested in extreme food. I once tried to start a chain of fugu restaurants, you know. What restaurants? Fugu. Well, same to you. No, no, it, fugu. It's Japanese for puffer fish. Here, have a look at me advert. Hey kids, I'm Luna McFugu, the tasty puffer fish, and I'm the chirpy friendly mascot for a new chain of fish restaurants, Lulu McFugu's! If we're not properly prepared, there's enough poison in one of us to kill 30 people! But never mind! Because with every kitty's fugu puppy meal, we give a cute little toy version of me. So go on, live dangerously and fill up on fugu! They say it's the most dangerous food in the world, Fugu. Apart from coconuts, obviously. Lulu McFugu's never really got off the ground, though. People started getting ill. What, what happened? Did you, did you not prepare the Fugu properly? How dare you? I prepared it perfectly. I used only the safest, most delicious parts of the fish. Trouble is, I never really bothered washing my hands. Personal hygiene's never really been my strong point. Yeah. Even now, I can never be bothered to clean the kitchen. Filthy it is. I'm surprised more people don't get food poisoning here, you know. It's only about 90%. Uh, please, may I be excused? Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, I think I'm empty now. Uh, do you still think that coconuts are the most dangerous <laughs> food in the world? I think coconuts cooked in Bert's kitchen would be more dangerous. Little Howard. Why are you scared of coconuts? Well, it was like this. We was at the fun fair. It was a hot June afternoon. You were on the water. I went to the coconut shy. I figured, why not throw some balls at some nuts? But there was nothing shy about these coconuts. I had three direct hits on those hairy devils, but they wouldn't budge, so I was cross. I jumped over the barrier to take a closer look. OK, you coconut jokers, where's the double-sided sticky tape? I went up to see if they were stuck down, and one of them jumped me. Oh! A coconut jumped you? You see? Evil. It sounds more like you got hit by a ball that someone had thrown at the coconuts. Yeah, but I bet one of the coconuts put him up to it. Oh, for goodness sake. Might I butt in here? And would you like some chicken soup? No mm. and no. I think Little Howard is referring to a statistic put forward by a UK travel insurance company that 150 people are killed every year by coconuts falling on their heads from trees. The company claimed that this figure made coconuts twice as dangerous as sharks, who only kill an average of 65 people a year worldwide. You see, Mother said some numbers, so it must be true. I'm afraid not, Little Howard. It has since proved to be false. There are almost no reported cases of deaths caused by coconuts randomly dropping on people's heads. People die while picking coconuts, falling out of coconut trees themselves, or riding motorbikes into coconut trees, but no more than any other sort of tree. Oh. So what is the most dangerous food in the world, then? Well, probably fugu. <clears throat> I'm not sure about that. I think it might be anything cooked in Bert's greasy cafe. <laughs> oh dear, who moved that bucket?
like to give you the best there is But I don't have the staff So if a dog is sick on my vest I wipe it off with my scarf It's a tea time for toilets It's a dinner for dunnies It's a lunch that your loo will like But it's not good for tummies I want to give you the very best That's what no one understands So when I go to the gentleman's I don't have time to wash my hands It's a dinner for dodos It's not good for your dodos Please try one of my donuts It will just go straight through you Some of you might be wondering why during the interval you weren't able to buy chocolate sweetest and ice cream like you normally can in the theatre. Well, it's Big Howard's fault. That's right. Like Jamie Oliver, I'm very concerned about the safety of food and the health of our children and all the really good publicity it gets me. So I've asked the theatre to uh, not sell any junk food or sweets, but sell fruit and veg instead. Now, now, I'm aware that some of you would rather buy a choc ice than a bag of raw carrots, and uh, that, that's... Oh, 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 for goodness sake, well, I... I, I no, ow, ow. Well, I don't know if you know how bad crisps and sweets are for you. There are over 200 calories in the... Oh, don't throw good lettuce! There are, there are vegetarians out there starving! Goodness sake. Um, Big Howard, I think on this occasion the most dangerous food is fruit and veg, especially pineapples. Oh. Who threw that? I bet you can't guess what's on the CBBC channel in 15 minutes. Beat the boss. Amazing! How did you know? I saw it on Newsround, and it's on next.